Like most of us, the very first thing I learned on guitar was chords. Open chords, and then I learned how to strum them, how to arpeggiate them, and that allowed me to start playing some simple songs, and then I started getting into lead guitar. My way in was the minor pentatonic scale, and uh, I got stuck in that for a long time. And because of that progression, you know, starting with the chords, rhythm, then lead guitar, I always thought that lead guitar was a lot harder than rhythm guitar. And in my 15-year-old mind, I also thought that lead guitar players were a lot more advanced than rhythm guitar players. But one day, I heard this, and that changed everything. Yeah, the first Hendrix song I heard was Little Wing, and that had a profound impact on me. But I had no idea where to categorize this. Was it rhythm guitar? Was it lead playing? Was it something different? I didn't really know, but I, I loved what I heard. So I went to my weekly guitar lessons. I was taking lessons with this local guy, and I let him hear that song, and he was like, yeah, well, yeah, that's Little Wing, Hendrix. Let me show you how it's done. So he showed me and he tabbed it manually on a piece of paper and sent me back home to work on that. And man, I spent hours trying to memorize that song, trying to really nail the everything, everything that was going on, memorize the parts. It was a very visual approach because I had the tabs in front of me. At the time, I didn't really have the knowledge of the fretboard that I, that I have today. And so I was really memorizing things visually on the guitar. I was also listening to what Jimmy was playing and eventually I got, I got kind of good at playing the way that uh, Little Wing was recorded on the album. But I was really missing something. It just felt unsatisfying. I was still not quite able to decide if what I had learned was rhythm guitar, lead guitar, both. And honestly, it was the first time I ever heard something like that. See, the thing is, like many kids born in the 70s, what got me into playing guitar was by listening to bands that had two guitar players and very clearly defined roles. There was the rhythm guitar player and the lead guitar player. You know, Guns N' Roses, Aerosmith, Metallica. Jimmy was different. There's only one guitar player in the Jimi Hendrix Experience Band, right? And what was really interesting to me was the fact that I could play that song the way I had learned it from the tabs that my teacher gave me, and the song would be recognizable. It wasn't like a piece of a solo, you know, lead guitar that I would learn. Well, that out of context really didn't sound like the song. It needed the other instruments to be understood. So I started listening to other tunes from Jimmy and, and I recognized what I loved so much in Little Wing. Those two worlds blended together. I heard it in The Wind Cries Mary, Angel. And that's really what I wanted to pursue as a guitar player. I didn't want to be just a lead player or just a rhythm player. I just wanted to be a guitar player, a musician who expresses himself through music and write songs, and that's really what I was after. So this is where things get interesting. After learning a few pieces from Jimmy's music, starting with Little Wing, and then Castles Made of Sand really taught me a lot, I started realizing that the rhythm parts and the lead parts that were kind of seamlessly blended together were all played in a similar position. And from an instrument standpoint, it makes total sense because it's easier to play in the same position instead of just having to jump around from lead playing to rhythm playing. And so that got me onto a quest, a new way of practicing guitar. I started with simple things, things I knew. A minor pentatonic scale that I blended with a minor chord. And the, the perfect example of that is that minor bar chord because you find a minor bar chord uh, within the minor pentatonic scale, that first position. So I pulled out my drum machine, created a simple loop, and just vamped over a single chord, an A minor seven chord, and I tried to inject into my rhythm playing some lead ideas. Now it is a little uncomfortable at first because transitioning from you know rhythm to lead when you're not used to it, 
is a little bit difficult. So what really helped was to put the guitar down and come up with uh, some subdivisions, get really comfortable with that. Eventually I started getting a little more adventurous because staying within that same position over and over can be a little limiting. So I explored the surrounding positions, you know, positions to the right side and to the left side. That helped. I got some new ideas. That was a little limiting because I was just playing with that minor chord. And then I moved on to major chords and the scale that I knew that would work over most major chords was, again, a major pentatonic scale. For me, it was a little trickier because the scale position that fits a bar major chord is not as comfortable to play with, but I still stuck to it and started to find some, some cool ideas, cool ways to inject that major pentatonic scale over the major chord. And eventually it started to get a little more comfortable. So I started making little songs using minor bar chords and major bar chords. Now, keep in mind that these bar chords were simply using the sixth string as the root. And that also meant that there was a lot of movements with my left hand across the fretboard to play all these chords. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but that kind of gave it a, a very unique sound. Plus the fact that I was always using the same chord positions meant that my fills, my injections, my lead injections always kind of sounded the same. <sighs> but that's okay because I kind of had a system at that point. I kind of understood that in order to play the way Jimmy was playing on these, these cool songs was just to embellish different chord positions. I started with the chords that I knew that I could move around. It's just a matter of doing that with any other chords. But here's the thing, at this point, I really had two options. I could either grab a book of chords, memorize all of those and spend enough time on each of these chord shapes to find ways to embellish those or trust the process that happens anytime you're actively practicing on something. See, the thing is when you're working on something musically, as long as your ear is involved in the process, your fingers retain that information. They, they make the connection between what you're hearing and the movements of your left hand. And I knew that if I worked on this enough, my fingers would be able to adapt to any musical situation they'd encounter, as long as I trusted the process. And that's the option I took. So instead of memorizing all the chords, which is impossible, I decided to add the element of surprise to my practice and just opened the real book and started going through chord progressions. I would take one chord at a time. If I didn't know the chord, which happened 99% of the time, I just tried to figure out how to play it. But the problem is that uh, the real book is full of jazzy chords. <laughs> But I kind of realized that uh, those jazz chords are really not as hard as they look. See, what was confusing at the time was the number after the chord. Like, well, those numbers, anything that comes after the, the actual root of the chord is an indication as to which interval you should add to the chord. And that was also an indication as to which note I could use to embellish the chord. Take a B minor six, for example. Well, the six is the sixth interval, and that just means that uh, if I want to inject some leads into that, I could add the sixth. Now, it's kind of hard to resist the urge to go full lead and, and licks and the fast stuff that kind of attracted me to guitar first, because our habits are oftentimes ingrained when we play guitar, and they're just kind of difficult to resist, but I did. And for about three months, that's pretty much all I did, work on rhythm and inject some lead ideas. And eventually I realized that there was kind of a system that had developed in my playing to do what I had heard originally in Little Wing. You see, I found that a lot of the chord positions that I was playing, whether simple chords or chords from the real book, were all kind of played in the same five positions over and over on the fretboard. I had no idea at the time that that was called the caged system, 
but that's exactly what I was doing. But I still had one issue. The issue was a creative issue. Eventually I got stuck, like we all do, and I needed more ideas. Thankfully, two guys really helped me. It was really interesting because after studying the music of these two guys, Jeff Beck and David Gilmore, I realized that they were both playing with the same exact system that I had developed after listening to Little Wing. And that really helped my lack of creativity. And I think it's gonna help you too. And if you wanna learn what I learned from these two guys, it's in this video. I'll meet you right there. Combine this with what we talked about today, magic happens.